or sketching. Definitely going from what we used to do where we used to knock on doors every, almost every day. We wake up and be like, yo, yo, I'll meet you at the coffee shop. And then from there we would just go to like door to door, knocking on people's doors to see if they would let us paint a mural on their building to painting the airport. That was like, that's a whole different thing. We started selling chicle every time we stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can, uh, we could uh, substantiate our uh, our coffee addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from Mexico City. I came to the United States at the age of nine years old. I've never been back to Mexico, never been out of the country because I'm a DACA recipient. It definitely was a struggle to go from being in high school and then figuring out that you are undocumented at that moment and thinking, well, what am I going to do with my life? And instead of being happy that you're going to do something with your life, it's like, well, I don't care about my grades and I don't care about what I'm going to do. So I was going to get a regular job. So it went from thinking like that to like DACA passed. And then it's like, oh, I got to get my grades up now. After a few years, that's when actually Rico would show up in, in my life again. And it was like, what am I doing? And I'm, I'm still doing my art on, art on the side, but I never thought it would be like this, I guess. I never thought that like just talking to Rico would bring everything that has brought us to where we are right now. My story is somewhat similar. I'm originally from Uruguay though. I came here at the age of 14. I had an extremely hard time uh, trying to assimilate with the American way. When I got here and after I got done with high school, I didn't realize what it was to be undocumented. Like I didn't once kind of even had a glimpse of how limited it was to be undocumented. And after graduating and constantly living in a state of fear, like my, my parents were like, you can't drive, you, you can't do this, you can't do that, they're gonna stop you, they're gonna just take you away. Constantly living in that state of, no, you can't, the big bad wolf is gonna get you, whatever. So started doing painting and slowly this, this ice uh, layer on me of you can't do it, slowly melting, but I have parents uh, that are still under the undocumented curtain. And I fear for them as I fear for any DACA recipient because that just that was just a little sticker like, all right, that's your band-aid, you're good to go, but they can take that away from you and you're just living in that state of anxiety constantly. Uh, yeah, I think I went off the script, but that's basically it. I guess the irony of like being able to like step into a, an airport and say, hey, I did that, but I can't go to that place, nor that place, and I so I can't get on that flight, nor that one, unless I have permission from someone else. Uh, so it's kind of like, it is super ironic. Yeah, while we were painting and we completely finished all of them and it wasn't opened yet, um, they allowed us to bring some of our family members in and it was like almost like the first time in a long 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 time that they stepped in foot into an actual airport. Yeah, same for my parents. It had been like 21 years. It was cool to bring them in and, and show them like hey, even if we can't <laughs> if we can't leave here <laughs> Check our work out, you know, so it's like being proud, but at the same time. It's like We're in a cage dude, you know so yeah.